Hey everybody, um, today we're going to talking about coronary stents and basically we'll talk about the drug eluding stents. Um, I hope you will enjoy this because uh, this is a topic which is very dear to my heart as I practice interventional cardiology but I'll assure you will enjoy it and uh, hope that at the end of this talk you probably will be knowing about the same if not more than the interventional fellows so i try to keep it very interesting and drill down some of the concepts um, that we need to know so with that we'll start so we all know there are two kind of stents that we are aware of one is uh, bare, bare metal stents that we don't use that much and then we have drug eluding stent most of the time we use drug eluding stents when I was a medical student and, and a resident and even in, in, in the initial part of my fellowship, you know, I had an impression, okay, we have these drug eluding stents, which are coated with the drugs and these drugs um, cause platelet inhibition, stop the clotting factors and all that. And that's why they stay open, which of course is the other way around. These drug eluding stents have drugs anti-cancerous drugs that basically makes them less favorable for endothelialization. So if you look at this picture one here, you have these stent studs. I'm going to make some arrows here. And you have this very small layer of, of one layer of endothelial cells that has to grow over these stent studs. So in, in, in drug loading stent, we have these stents which are coated with anti-cancerous or anti-mitotic drugs. So this endothelialization does not happen that quickly as compared to the bare metal stent. So if these patients are not maintained on the tap, you in fact have a higher instance of stent thrombosis and clot formation as compared to the bare metal stent. But where the money lies is if you see this picture too here, the stent, when you put it in the artery, it's a foreign object and it is it causes inflammation, it causes angiogenesis, it causes genetic expression and all kinds of cytokines and causes inflammation. This inflammation causes smooth muscle cells proliferation and as these smooth muscles grow they can grow into the lumen and as this process continues on you have what we call as the in stent restenosis and the drug looting stent basically target this very basic concept so the drug looting stents release antimitotic drugs into the media inhibiting the smooth muscles proliferation leading to decrease instant restenosis. So you have decreased instant restenosis in the drug eluding stent. So let me show you a cross-sectional area of a stent start. If this is a stent start, initially they started you know, when the drug looting stent came in, they tried to coat the stent with gold, with heparin, coumadin, all kind of different medication. And then finally they found out that one of the medication that is anti-cancerous or the medication that we use for rejection, mainly paclitaxel and serolimus, had very good results. So they started coating the stent with the with these anti-cancerous drug the problem with the first and second generation stents was once you coat these stents with these drug they will just quickly release these drug into the arteri arterial media and the lumen and then with this came a concept of having A polymer so basically 
what we're using right now in the third generation stents is are the same anti-cancerous drug but around the stent stirred there is a polymer which binds this drug and slowly releases it into the media inhibiting the smooth muscles but this comes with a caveat and the caveat is once the drug is gone all the drug is eluded you are left with the polymer and that polymer itself can lead to increased inflammation and can cause increase smooth muscle cells proliferation so now in the third generations of stent they have taken care of this by that polymer that holds the drug it's also absorbable so first the drug is released slowly over a period of months so that there is no smooth muscle proliferation and then later on the polymer itself dissolves leaving behind only the metallic stent starts another thing that has happened over the many years is the size of the stents starts initially they were somewhere around 180 to 200 microns thick now they have really you know refined it so that these stent starts are somewhere between 70 to 90 microns they have cut down the size of the stent starts but at the same time have given more strength strength to the stent so that it does not fracture because you know if you cut down the metal you lose the ax axial strength and all that thing and the stent can fracture so now with the new designs like open cell closed cell peak to peak peak to trough i won't go into detail of how kind of engineering you know what kind of engineering is all behind this stent structure that has led to their increased axial strength so that they don't fracture but at the same time maintain a very very thin stent starts so this is kind of how the stents have evolved obviously you might have heard the three different kind of stents that we are using currently in the cath lab one of them is the synergy stent it's also a third generation drug eluding stent third generation it is made by boston scientific so they came up with a very neat idea so basically what they did was if you look at this figure one or the stent one, they coated the stent stirred with the with the polymer with the drug mixed with it only at the stent surface which comes in contact with the media right there. So that whatever drug is released, it is released right here in the media and nothing is released in the abluminal surface so what benefit do you get from it basically the endothelialization of the luminal surface of the stent starts happens quickly and that's why you might have heard about synergy stent and you know short depth treatment treatment for one month or three months and all that this is the basic idea having the drug and the polymer just on the inside the media not hanging into the lumen and again as i said in the third generation stents the drug is eluded and also the polymer dissolves leaving behind only the very very thin stent starts in the lumen of the artery then you have stent number two which is zions it's also a third generation stent it is made by abbott Again, these have 
it's kind of similar as the synergy stand these are very thin studs stand studs and they are coated with a polymer and over the period of time what happens is the polymer dissolves and and then the the drug is eluded as well the the drug that they use is called evrolimus which is an analog analog of serolimus and synergy also uses evrolimus drug which brings us to the another stent which is we use in the cath lab is called onyx so onyx drug the drug for the onyx stent is zetrolimus basically the same these are all the analogs of serolimus different companies have been using have the patents for different drugs so onyx which is made by medtronic uses the zetrolimus so similarly they have the onyx stent has a very very thin stent stirs this there is a, that polymer coating the stent stirs and then that polymer holds the the zetrolimus drug what's neat about that onyx stent is they have really crafted that stent in a very nice way that they made the inside of the stent stirred hollow and inside that hollow stent stirred they have put an alloy which is radio opaque what does that achieve basically if you're putting a stent in somebody who's very obese they have a lot of body mass and all that you want to really see the stent as you go down on the stent stirred size it becomes very hard to look at the stent to see the stent especially when you are placing the stents so onyx has really what they have done is they have put this alloy which is radio opaque inside the lumen of the stent stir and that makes it more radio opaque so that you can see it on the angiogram the bottom line as i said all these three stents all of them are equally good all of them have excellent results good results basically what you really want to do and know about them is their deliverability like how comfortably you can get them to the the lesion or into the artery because that's the key if you cannot get a stent to the lesion how, no matter how good the stent is you know there is no point of having that stent and that's why most of the stents have failed in the past because they might have good structure good engineering behind it but if you cannot get it to the right place you know there is no point of having those stents but all of these stents are very very deliverable and with the onyx now they are coming with coming with the coming up with a trial called onyx 1 at the TCT they have presented the data where you know you can basically have the interruption of the tapped or you can stop the plavix or clopidogrel or prasugrel after one month we're still learning a lot about it we will probably not see it in the guidelines maybe for the next one or two years with this i'm just going to bring you guys to the future which we kind of missed in the past when i say the future missed in the past i'm just going to make this block here is figure 4 what was the absorbed absorbed stent again it was made by abbott they spent a lot of money they may, they might have at least spent billions of dollar on this development of this absorbed stent but unfortunately it did not work as well but that does not mean that we did not learn from it we basically have learned a lot about the basic pathophysiology and the anatomy and the histology that goes behind so that we can in the future develop more better stent so basically what happening with the absorbed stent was these stent studs were made up of a material which was absorbable so the idea was over the period of time 
you don't want anything extra in the lumen or in the media of the artery that might impair the normal vasogenic reflexes the compliance of the the artery and for example if the patient needs to go for cabbages or if they want if they need a repeat intervention another stent you're not putting two layers of stent so that was a very neat idea so that's how they came up with this absorb stent and the trial was absorb trial and as i said abbott spent a lot of money on it it was cleared by fda we used it was widely used in europe the results were phenomenal no early stent thrombosis less stent, less instant restenosis although these stent starts were a little thicker but still they have equally good results then came around 2017 when they started seeing what we call as a late stent thrombosis we all know that stent thrombosis is highest in the first month or two when the stents are still endothelialization is going on so we really want to patient be on the the dapt but in this absorb stents the researchers started seeing that after one or two years you will see what we call like a late stent thrombosis not the in instant restenosis but the stent thrombosis and that kind of puzzled the researcher and they started scratching their head as to what exactly is going behind this and eventually this led to the to the uh, to pulling of this stand off the market so so the fda and all in europe everywhere they say well you have to have more data to sh- to to see what's going on before we can commercially use that so with this i bring you why was this late stent thrombosis was happening so let's let me give you an example of of a wall so if this is a wall and you are putting bricks by bricks on the wall and you are raising the wall you putting some cement or something to keep these bricks together at the same time you know you might have seen that they put these scaffolds these scaffolds are basically trying to keep the wall together till the you know wall is dry and 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 the cement has consolidated because if you are raising the wall and let's say for example you have built a wall high wall and then you just pull out this scaffold imagine what will happen the the dry, the wall is not dry yet the cement has not consolidated the wall will crumble so basically what was happening with the absorbed stent was these stent stirs were connected with each other through a scaffold and as the time was going on and we know these these stents have this bioabsorbable material so you will have these connections between them slowly going away to a point all is left is probably like 30 or 40% of the stent in the lumen and then imagine it's just like a rusted pipe waiting to just fall into the lumen so when that happened you have late stent thrombosis it took about you know a lot of research histology a lot of specimens for the researchers to see exactly why was that happening so now they are trying to come up with the idea like okay if the stent gets absorbed it should absorb at a very synchronous way so that not half of that is dissolved half of that is still remaining because it can just crumble as i said like the wall here into the lumen and causing stent thrombosis okay i hope this was helpful if you have any questions feel free to ask me i'd be more interested to know what other topics you want me to cover have a good day